Hey everybody, Jimmy Coffin here for Coffin Comics. We've got the one and only Keith Garvey here for the Keith Garvey celebration. He's here live at the Coffin Compound, not HQ. That was the old building. This is the Coffin Compound. We're here and uh, we've got Keith. He's doing remarks. These, one of these remarks could be yours if you ordered this weekend. But uh, he's sitting here in the lunchroom getting away from everybody so he can get some great lights and we can work on the uh, remarks. So, uh, hey, let's uh, see how he's doing and get some insight into the master artist. Keith Garvey. Hey Keith, how you doing? I'm doing great. Having a good time here for your artist celebration. Oh yeah, it's an amazing place, yeah. Absolutely having fun. So Brian got to show you around the whole whole place. What's your yeah. first thoughts of the uh... It's it's uh it's like being in Disneyland for for Lady Death. You know, it's amazing. It's attention to detail is incredible. And what you're working on here, we got uh, uh just Lady Satan is doing a little remark on the side. So what's that story you were telling everybody earlier about uh, doing some of your first remarks? <laughs> I was at a, a, a an event where I was sitting next to some other artists at Evas, and uh, it was the first time I ever did a remark. So. I had never drawn in front of people before, not for any, you know, important reason. And so this guy was asking me to do a remark for him. It actually was like a, not even a remark. It was a blank cover I was going to do for him. And I was really nervous about it. And Eve asked, was edging me on. He's like, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. But meanwhile, he's giving me pencils to work with. So I finally gave in to him. And when I went, people came around because they saw I was going to draw. And they surrounded the table and I went to draw and my hands just shuck <laughs> like this i did get through it and it was you know it was a drawing it was okay he was happy with it and we took a picture afterward but you know that was terrifying for the first time i'm still i still feel that way you know if it's for something if i'm, if I'm doing it for fun i don't care if people watch but when it's for something then i feel like i <laughs> i get nervous about it and you're new to the comic book world right is that yeah uh pretty new yeah like um a few years now but I used to do all pinups and now pretty much all comics. You also mentioned you haven't really done many uh, conventions. No, so. only actually only one convention. I've done some events for Zenoscope and now this, and but never only went to uh, Motor City once, and that's the only Comic Con I've done. But you know, I'm getting out and do some more probably. So how did you start as a uh, as an artist? Oh, well, as an artist, I just, I've always, like, since I was little, I was going to be an artist. And then, I'll tell you a story. I used to do pinups exclusively, and people, most people who know me know that's what I do. So when I was, like, 12, I've told this story before, so some people might know it. But when I was 12, my parents used to go to my cousin's house where he had Playboys hidden in his closet. And I knew it, and I was a 12-year-old. He also had Mad Magazine. So I used to go in there. And I'd take the Playboy and I'd put it in the middle of the Mad Magazine and I'd flip through it and that, without anybody knowing. And that's when I discovered Vargas, the Alberto Vargas. And I right then knew that's exactly what I want to do. I want to draw naked women. And then, you know, from there on, that's what I tried to do. And I, my mother used to say, you're never going to make a living drawing naked women. Well, I was able to. And then that just evolved. And uh, because, there's, you know, the comics become really sexy now. And people saw my work and then they were like, hey, can you do this for us? And now I moved almost entirely over to uh, comics. But I just put out a book. So if I could just plug that for a second. I got a Kickstarter going out right now. And it's just pinups. So, you know, you can just look online. You'll find it. And uh, it's just pinups. So I did four new ones. And plus there's some old ones in there. So it's not entirely thing. I did go back a little bit. But mostly all this now. Which I love, by the way. That sounds like Mad Magazine and Playboy. That's the yeah. perfect combination. Right? It is. It is. It sort of is. I mean, depending on who you are, right? That makes sense. Did you have any formal training after you... Uh... Oh yeah, I went, um, I have a degree uh, for commercial art, 
from the Art Institute of Pittsburgh, and then I have a business degree from Bryant Stratton and Buffalo, just two associates degrees, but you know, all towards art. Not the business degree wasn't, but uh, commercial art. So it's always been commercial stuff, not fine art. So I think that's all I'm gonna do there. Did it help you at all with uh, going to school for art, or is it absolutely stuff? no, no? It was it definitely helped. Yeah, it's commercially, because it wasn't like uh, learning how to oil paint. It was really how to. It really helps with doing things like comics and stuff because it's more uh, commercial level stuff. It's not a deep painting of roses or something like that or a landscape. I was always doing something that was sort of pop culture. Excuse me. So would you recommend that to a young uh, up and coming artist? That uh... you know, I've heard lately that these. Uh, art institutes have become sort of predator colleges where they're trying to get people in. I think it's still a good school, but they're really expensive. And I don't think you have to go to become this, but I would say that definitely any kind of art schooling helps. Definitely helps. I don't know, we got a hollow foil here. Yeah. So I'm trying to do something, I'm trying to do different on this one. Let's see if I can find something interesting. Let's see. Yeah, this one's a little easier to draw on. Still, that surface is tough. Well, so what can you tell us about the Artist Celebration exclusives? What was your... Oh, the, the three close-ups. Actually... Yeah, did you get any other uh, direction besides that? or He, uh, Brian wanted to have a connecting, three connecting, so, so you could put them together, uh, covers. So, I... First, originally did three separate ones where the three different characters were on different ones and it was full body and I had like lava flowing and it was going to go from one to the other and fire going across. And he was like, well, let's see some more because he wasn't quite crazy about that one. So I thought I had an idea. I love to do really detailed faces and stuff. So I said, how about some close-ups? And I did some mock-up of some close-ups. He was like, great, just back it up a little bit so we can see like from belly button up. And I did I mock those up, and he really liked those, so we went with those. And so it was sort of my idea, but uh, tweaked a bit. Yeah, they turned out stunningly. They are fantastic. They, I, they did, you know. I mean, <laughs> I'm saying my own work to it, but it did. No, the way they were printed up, it looked really beautiful. You know, it seems to be your, for me, it's always the look that you give the ladies. The faces are yeah. the most important thing, I think. Yeah. Uh, so you really shine on the. I would say that that's my, yes. I, I won't say I shine, but you know <laughs> what I mean. Like yes, I think it's important to me that the faces. Are yes, it was like your trade. Really pretty, and you know, sort of. There's a softness to mine. That's why Lady Death isn't always. You know, sometimes they they like, make it a little harder, a little bit more, because I go a little girl next door, and Lady Death really isn't that. A lot of the characters aren't, but uh, we'll get there. What's the difference between just artist and pinup artist? That just means you focus on... Yeah, just the sexy, you know, like the sexy, posed, classically, you know, it goes back to the 30s, right? 30s pinups. P pictures of pretty girls, half naked, probably been popular. <laughs> yeah. And for me, it was an art form. So when I saw that, I wanted to, that's all I wanted to draw. I was drawing Spider-Man. I was drawing entirely like Spider-Man and Iron Man. And then I saw Vargas, and I just drew naked women all the time. So, I mean, a lot of boys are Drake could draw naked women, but I was going to do that for a living. When I found out someone does this for a living, this is what they do, so that's what I want to do. And comics. So, actually, my dream came true, because now I'm drawing sort of pinup comics. So, Did I'm lucky. You, you used to collect uh, Spider-Man? Yep, Spider-Man. Me and my brother, I have an older brother, he's five years older than me. We used to collect Iron Man, Spider-Man, um, Avengers. He was the like the boss of it all, but we used to do it together. And uh, we had a really nice collection. 
but he ended up selling that collection and I was kind of pissed off. But we stopped collecting after a while anyway, so. But we had a really nice one for a while. And we had our own comic book. He was the writer. He was the writer. The comic book guy was the illustrator. The Blue Streak. It was pretty much Spider-Man. You know what I mean? But uh, we had our own thing. I used to do covers and in interiors that were ridiculously bad, but we had fun with them. And when was this? This was like... I was little. I was, oh. you know, 10, 12. Nah, I had to be older than 10, but I was pretty young. 13? Well, that's awesome. That's just like Brian Polito. He, I don't know if you saw up in the archive, he has uh, Brian Polito and his Kung Fu... No, Bra Kung Fu Brian Polito and his chicks. Something like that. He, he I know, I didn't say that. You'll have to point that out to me. I, didn't, I don't think I saw it. Maybe I saw it and didn't know what I was looking at. Yeah, when he was, he was young, too. He was making his own comics as well. When did you first discover comics? Oh, man, I don't know. I was little. My brother was in, like I said, my brother was older and he was collecting them. So I was into whatever he was into. And then, uh, so yeah, so we started doing that together. Classic older brother. brother. Yeah, and then we would fight all the time about who, <laughs> who it actually belonged to. If I bought, I bought issue 11, he's not allowed to read it. You know, <laughs> we would fight constantly. So yeah, you want to take us through your uh, process on your how you create your artwork? For example, the this latest Tannis cover or the. Um, cover? I'll do a sort of a basic sketch, pencil sketch, just to get the basics of what I want it to look like. I'll get that pretty close to what I want, and then I'll scan it in, and then I take it digitally and correct it make it all perfect all the proportions right and then, and then i'll do a nice drawing online right, right over what i did of course it's a layer and then you can get rid of the pencil and then i can digitally paint it and uh that's actually the easiest part of it putting it together getting a nice line drawing so that i can it's all proportions the way i want it to look is the hardest part and then i paint it with the uh, photoshop Although I have started using um, Procreate, which I'm not not real fluent at yet, but I think it's kind of a fun add-on to be able to use. You know what Procreate? You know Procreate? It's uh, on the iPad, iPad, and you can just draw with it right on oh. there. And you can like, if you want a smooth line, you just click smooth line. So if your if your hand is unsteady with it, it'll still come out a perfectly smooth line. Or you want a a nice curve, it'll give you a perfect curve. So I got to get better at it, but I think that's a nice tool. So when did you discover uh, the digital realm to do that? Um, my cousin gave me Photoshop. Um, I used to draw pinups, just like sketches, and nobody was seeing them, except for my friends and my family. And um, my cousin gave me a copy of Photoshop. And he was like, you gotta check this out because you can do anything with it. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, this is what I wanna do. No more mixing paints, no more paper, no more. You can do it all in here. And if I do make a mistake, I just undo it and do it again. Undo it and do it again until it's right. So that was perfect for me because I'm lazy and I wanted the quickness of it. And uh, I just went nuts. I would spend all day, every day, just working it till I got really, really good at it. And you know, that's basically what I'm still doing. I mean, there's more drawing involved now, but it's basically the same. Did you find once you did that once digital, it was you could do so much more? Do produ productivity increase? Absolutely. Yeah. First of all, I would like it more, so I was doing it more. It looked better. It looked professional. Now I can make things look like they're finished products and stuff like that instead of just a sketch or a painting, which I used to do paintings too, but that's sort of a different feel and a different thing. And um, yeah, and then it just, I took to it and uh, yeah, I learned. I still use a very old version of Photoshop. Um, 
I don't use the new Photoshop. I got so good at the one I'm using that it's almost like I don't have to look like a typist where you don't look. I can just sort of boom, 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 boom and hit things. I miss sometimes, but I know I missed. It's like, it's a weird. Sometimes when I'm drawing, I'll be drawing on a piece of paper and I'll go to undo. And it's like, it's like a muscle memory. So that's how much I'm into it. Man and machine have become one. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I wish it was a little better. So when did you become full-time? When were you able to quit the, quit your day job and start doing art full-time? I actually had two jobs most of the time. I would do this and then I was doing something else. Uh, the last 10 years, I would say, that I didn't have to uh, do another job. I mean, my wife works and she makes money, so it's not just me or something. But uh, yeah, I'd say the last 10 years I've been able to just do art and get along. I'm not getting rich. You have to sort of know that when you're an artist too. It's for the art, it's to feed the... Uh... Do you feel like if you couldn't do art, you'd It'd be painful? I don't know if it'd be painful. If it just uh, lost the ability, sure. Yeah, if I never did it, I don't know. But if all of a sudden I just lost my abilities, oh yeah, that would be painful for sure. And uh, Forsworn Nation, you, you were doing some of the... You haven't done too many remarks before for people, Never. so this is going to be... This terrible. is like the... If you count earlier... Two, this is like the fifth one I ever did. All right, we move down to another artwork here. So any final words for Sworn Nation and the fiends out there? Uh, all I have to say is I want to thank the people who did come out today. There's, Sworn Nation is an amazingly dedicated group of people. And they are so into the characters and the artwork and stuff. And it's, I just love working for them because they're so appreciative of it. And they love it so much. And that's, as an artist, that's what you want. You just want people to love what you're doing. And they love these characters. A little responsibility involved with it. But it's still, you know, that's the best. You want people to be that passionate. Yeah, and uh, on behalf of Coffin Comics, we want to thank you for always delivering the goods. And uh, we appreciate you and your artwork. So uh, thank you so much, Keith, and thanks for coming out here to uh, Wilds of Arizona. Well, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. <laughs>